Good morning, folks. Starting with the primary eruption threat of our star. Plasma filaments have survived the incoming turn on the limb and are now in geoeffective eruption position, our top space weather watch moving forward today. We're going to the Yelverton lab down in Albany, Georgia. Billy working with the 70,000 volt transformer and some potter's clay. We're going to notice more than just the electrical evacuation of particles, but also a distinct color change. You can easily see the moments of concentricity to the burst effect, distant actions from the source, dendritic patterns even, and then he decided to really have some fun. We'll give this just a moment here. Part 1 of a NASA interview perked my ears for Part 2 coming next week, a push to further discover just how much of this climate change is natural versus anthropogenic. Thumbs up. Followed by the implication that the recent cold events the planet has seen are not part of climate change. Thumbs down. Hashtag Shelley McShillerton. If you missed this one, it's just another of the severe events of a cold nature. Stay away from our farmers, please. Volcanic activity at this mountain remained silent for 15 years. The slumber has ended and it's roaring back to life. Sticking in South America to see the cloud curves that NASA says are driven by those same clockwise and counterclockwise drives we were discussing yesterday. Far more relevant to the news is yet another convergence like the ones causing the flood disaster slightly south. Here we go again. Precipitable water overlay doesn't do the South Australian system justice, about to crest onto Tasmania while already affecting areas well to the north. We do have a tiny low circling down across Norway at the moment, and another is sitting just off the coast of Spain and Portugal. Despite both of those, our top severe weather threats tonight are in the eastern Mediterranean from Greece east to Istanbul. Know what makes it hard to sleep in Columbus, Ohio? That. The T-shaped watch zone was indeed an energetic place to be last night. Before getting to tonight's watch, let's do a brief contrail forecast because it's super easy today. Water content, pretty much on the entire eastern side of the country, is very, very high off of that northern flow of Gulf moisture. However, there's no reason contrail should be persistent or overly active from the southwest up in the areas not far off the west coast. If you are going to call them, please do it correctly. Watch tonight resembles the last, take heed in the yellow areas most of all. Last night marks the second time in a month we've called out the calmer geomagnetic conditions in the evening news only to watch a density and speed push drive a low level geomagnetic storm right afterwards. It was brief of the lowest order over now and actually didn't do much different to the sensitive meters. Solar flaring. Hate to be a broken record, but the weakening continues on the lack of developing sunspots. The active regions on the disk right now lack any significant mixing of their umbras despite having mostly beta or even arguably gamma class. Flaring just won't happen with those. I begin to question the usefulness of the coronal hole detector on ASSA once more as no coronal holes are shown on their chart while your eyes know much better in 211 angstroms and not to mention the fact that the other signets in ISWA are showing the coronal hole power just fine. Filament monitor? Fairly on point. Those filaments shown at the beginning are indeed our primary eruption threat with the coronal hole sitting right in the middle of them actually. You should be able to see that the active regions are mostly departing and the coming days will be quieter on our star. However, we do have an expected increase to seismicity as the weekend approaches due to the coronal holes, integrating space weather energy and tomorrow's geocentric geometry. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. 